Hey guys, what's up? In this video, we are going to see how to establish a reverse shell via Vim editor. We'll assume that we already have a shell established from a local user on a target machine. And in our case, the username is ptlab machine. Now let's say that after a bit of enumeration, we land upon the contents of sudo l command. And here we see that the current user, which is ptlab machine, can run the Vim editor and they can edit this particular file as sudo and no password is required for it. Now one way to exploit this would be to simply copy this command and run it as sudo and it will take us to the Vim editor. For this demonstration I have left the contents of this file empty and anyways the contents don't matter much in this case. To execute a command within Vim, we use user syntax colon followed by exclamation mark and then the shell command that we want to give. So let's try to give who am I command. And here you can see that we are running as a user root. So this way we can directly execute command through this shell. However, this is not that appealing. What I would really like is to have a reverse shell, a full fledged reverse shell back from this machine. So let's work toward it. We already know that we can execute commands through Vim editor. So let me just close this. Now to get a reverse shell back from this machine and we'll do it in a way so that even if we lose the shell, we can get it back every time the user runs Vim. To do that, we'll go to the home directory of this user. And we'll list the contents of this directory to see if there is a dot vimrc file. In this case, there is no such file. So let's create a vimrc file. And to do that, we can simply do echo and followed by the contents that we want to specify, which are colon exclamation mark and the command. And in this case, it's who am I? And then the name of the file, which is dot vimrc. And now if we see uh, this file has been created. Now let's run Vim to verify if the configuration file actually works. And here you will see the output of this command, which is ptlab machine, and it will wait for us to exit this mode. This is not a good thing from an attacker perspective because it will definitely raise suspicions of the target that something is amiss with their machine. Get out of this, we'll close vEditor and let's modify the command that we are running in the vimrc file. So the new command will be echo. And this time we'll specify silent to execute this command in silent mode. And then exclamation mark, who am I? And then let's write it to the vimrc file. Now let's execute vim. And this time as you can see that there was no interruption and vim launched successfully. Let's get out of vim. And here you can see the result of the command that was executed, which is the username of the current user. Awesome. So we can use this technique to establish a reverse shell from this machine and possibly do a privilege escalation or maybe establish persistence on this machine. Now to be able to launch a reverse shell, we need a couple of things. First thing we will need is obviously a payload that will send us back a reverse shell. To do that, we'll use msfvenom. And the command that we are going to use is this msfvenom. The payload is 64-bit Linux interpreter reverse shell. This is a staged payload. And the port that we are going to specify is 4434. This is a random port that I've chosen. And the file that I'm going to save this in is a binary or ELF format file and I've named it to be vim underscore dot vim underscore rc so that it remains pretty well hidden and does not raise much suspicion. So I'll press enter to generate this payload. Now let's transfer this file onto the target machine and to do that we'll simply run a python server here on port 80 and we can download it from our attacker machine. I need to use it with wget. Let me copy it and 
use wget and then control shift v to paste it and here as you can see a connection was established and vim.rc was downloaded onto our target machine next we are going to set up the multi-handler listener in msf console so through that let's launch msf console now let's set up a multi-handler and the payload that we have given is this 64-bit Linux metapreter and the L host is my attacker machine IP address and the port is 4434 let's run this all right on the target machine let's change the permission of this file to let it execute to do that we'll use chmod plus x to make this file executable now we may choose to directly launch this file through the vim configuration file or or we can do it via script the second way that is doing it via script is sort of more obfuscated way and will raise less suspicion if we name a script in a way that does not raise any eyebrows on the user's part so let's do that and we'll again use echo command to create a script file and the first thing that we need to enter in the script is shebang bin bash and let's make a script a dot file which will hide it from a user's plain view and we'll name it as vim includes.sh the next command that we we'll need to enter in this script is the path of the executable that we want to launch in our case it's home elab machine hyphen dot vim underscore rc and let's append it to our vim includes.sh file but let's see if this works so we'll first need to change the permission of this file to an executable and to do that the command is again chmod plus x and then the name of the file roots.sh and now let's launch this file and we should see a metapreter shell here roots.sh all right awesome so it has resulted in our metapreter shell so that means our script is working correct let's exit this metapreter session and run it again and now we need to update our vimrc file so that it can execute the script and the command to do that will be echo we we'll first specify the silent mode to avoid user interruptions and then the exclamation mark to go into shell mode and the path of the executable script that we want to run and let's save this to vimrc file now let's launch vim again and see what happens so we got a metapreter shell here however the execution of vim stopped and it will stay stuck here until we exit this metapreter shell this is not a good thing from the attacker perspective and it will definitely raise user suspicion we can avoid this by a very simple trick and for that we need to modify the command that we are giving in the vimrc file so let's close vim here and uh, let's copy this part till here and i'll paste it here and all i'm going to do is append an ampersand sign at the end of this command which will essentially execute this script as a job in background and it won't stop the execution of vim dot vim rc and let's run our metapreter listener again and let's execute vim so this time vim launched and we got our metapreter session back to see which user we have access to we can simply type get uid and it will say that so our username is pt lab machine but we already have access as pt lab machine so we don't want this let's exit this shell run the listener again here let's quit vim and let's use the command that was in the sudo file and you can see that using sudo hyphen l command copy this and run this as sudo And now if we see the result of get uid to know which user we are running as it will say that we are running as root on ptlab machine so this was not only a 
privilege escalation mechanism can also be used as a persistence mechanism so every time a user launches vim we are going to receive this shell back and that's all i have for this video i'll see you in the next video soon